so many variants that debuted at MegaCon, and we're back with an Overstreet Price Guide advisor to talk about the best one. Another week, another list. The comic sensei back in the house. How are you feeling? I am fantastic, Tom. It is so great to be here. I missed you. I heard MegaCon was crazy and so many incredible releases. It was such a pleasure to get a chance to meet so many comic fan members on the other side of the world. It was my first MegaCon, but I digress. We got to talk about the trending comics in the comic place. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button. We're here for the comic fam every single week. And at the list at number 10, McFarlane goodness straight out the gates at Megacon hitting all kinds of numbers. Department of Truth number 18, the 2022 Megacon exclusive. Wow. Todd McFarlane goodness, absolutely. $160 average sales, $280 for a raw sale. Whoo, this book was hot this week. Department of Truth 18 debuted this past week. And if you ordered as a shop 100 copies of the covers available, you would have unlocked the ability to get the color version of the book on the list. But that's not what we're talking about today. The Megacon edition has this sketch on a foil background and it's glorious in person. Comic fam, this one in a hundred variant is incredible, and the foil one is selling for even more. Which one do you like better? Knowing that Todd McFarlane was not going to stop at one variant at MegaCon, he also released this incredible foil Batman number 423, the amazing cover with the cape that we all know and love. But the best part is on this variant, they fixed the little bit of the moon that was missing, that yellow spot that has always bugged Todd enough to be able to mention in interviews, they fixed it for the con. Yeah, we'll put up the original copy on screen. There's actually two different areas on the original print that didn't come out right. And since then, it's been a joke in the industry that these were mistakes. But with this foil variant, also, by the way, hitting $150 on eBay, it has fixed the problem. And I also want to give a big shout out to this book because it has one of the best Batman quotes of all time. We see Bruce Wayne under the mask, in the cowl, going up against an antagonist who has taken hostage an old woman, and he says the coolest thing. I swear that if you harm that woman at all, I'll make you pay. I will break and twist things within you. You can't conceive of the pain I can cause. It's pain that will go on forever. You won't escape it because I won't let you die. Die. Slap a like button for that amazing impression of Christian <laughs> Bale Batman and at the list at number nine, clandestine number two, debuting in 1994, yet another character, team, that's essentially being retconned possibly for Disney+. Plus. $5 average sale, no real high sale on this. And a lot of times when you talk about the clandestine book, you're talking about issue number one, which is that crazy foil cover that has the weird speckling because the foil just deteriorates. But we're talking about issue number two, the first full appearance of Adam Destin. An increase of over 1,150% this week after actor Ali Asala announced on his Instagram page that he's going to be portraying a character in the upcoming Ms. Marvel show. And the post included the IMDb announcement. When you go to that page, you see that the character's name is indeed Adam. Could it be Adam Destin, a famous warrior of the Crusades whose lineage is so legendary that he had to form a team? The clandestine. After Adam Destin returned from the Crusades, he met his wife, Aleith, a djinn, a genie, who granted him the curse of immortality, lived for over a thousand years, having superpowered children, but having to watch them die. This amazing, powerful family, the clandestine, is absolutely a must read. Ali is slated for more than two episodes of Ms. Marvel. Could this team that we see very briefly in the trailer be the clandestine? Well, Tread lightly, this is all unconfirmed. However, one thing we do know is that Kamala Khan's origin is changing a bit from the comics. She's an inhuman in the comic books. In the trailer, it appears that she wears and dons these bracelets that unleash her cosmic powers. Could she be related to the clandestine? Could she be part of the lineage of this superpowered team? Or... Is this all a red herring? We did just see Black Bolt in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. Why would they introduce us to an Inhuman and then retcon and change Ms. Marvel's origin? 
comic fam, there is so much to learn about comic books True. right now. And you know what? If you want the absolutely best app to learn everything you need to about the books that are popping this week, you have got to get Key Collector. Key Collector Comics, the best comic app in the multiverse, in any timeline of all time. We have an application available for both Androids and iPhones. And if you use the code TOM101, it unlocks a free two-week subscription of the app in its entirety and you support the show. But 98% of the categories, the app is for free for you to catalog your comics, get suggested pricing, and learn about funny books. Next at the list, at number eight, Archer goodness. Number eight on the list, New Mutants number 25. This is the one in 50 variant done by the incredible Art Germ. We are seeing average sales of $65. And this is the second week this book has been available. Now there was a one in 50 variant that made the list and this one has trade dress on it, but they also made a one in a hundred virgin variant. And when you combine the units sold of both variants, we're seeing an increase of copies sold of 183% this week. And if you enjoy Archer variants, go to the artist search on Key Collector, there's a full list of all the ones that sell aggressively. Two that I wanted to point out, Marvel Comics 1000, the Emma Frost variant, as well as the New Mutants number one, one in 200 magic variant. Both of these books sell for astronomical numbers. You gotta know them. Number seven on the list, Thor number two. Two. Absolutely no surprise that we're going to be talking about Jane Foster with the trailer dropping this week. $40 average sales. The thing that is a surprise is it's only $115 in a CGC 9.8 for a recent sale. That sale just happened this month. And last month, we had a $200 9.8 sale. In between the sale we're reporting on and last month's record, there was a $170 sale. This comic book is seeing some lulls as we approach the movie. And this isn't the only key book associated with the movie that's coming out in two weeks that we're seeing lulls on. However, we're still seeing an increase of copies sold of 171%. Now, out of all the Jane Foster appearances where she's someone like Thor, this is the first time that this actually happens in Marvel continuity. There are cameos before this. There are her with a different name before this. We don't know how popular this book is going to be long term. There is movement. People are looking at it. We're excited that she's shown up even more in this trailer. I think this book is still in a lull. And if they happen to take Jane Foster and make her have a three, four, five picture deal. We could see a lot of movement in this book. Keep an eye on it. Maybe a good time to secure it with the drops it's had. Speaking of which, at the list at number six, what if number 10, debuting in 1978? This is when Jane Foster first lifts Mjolnir in comic books in a out of continuity story. $190 average sales, $525 for CGC 9.6. In the month of May, but that is down from its height. Yeah, get this, comic fam. Last month, a 9.8 hit $2,000. There's been four sales since then. Let me run through them quickly. After that $2,000 sale, we saw a $1,400 sale. Yes, a $600 drop. But then soon after, $1,500. Then $1,600, and the most recent 9.8 sale is $1,700. Unlike the other comics, including the last book on the list, this one seems to be creeping back up, and it's been a fan favorite forever. Of all the Jane Foster keys, this one's my favorite. It's a 109% increase in copies sold this week, and I think this book is going to hold steady. I love this book too, Tom, and the, the fact that even though she's not Thor, she's Thordis in this comic, this is totally the one to get. She's on the cover. If you enjoy what we do and want to support the show directly, Join the June Mystery Mail Call. One per box. We're sending out a new Fantastic Four number one, Kang the Conqueror cover by legendary artist Alex Maleev. Link in the description down below or go to ComicTom101.com to sign up. You have until the 15th of the month. And now, some words that I never thought I would utter ever. Number five on the list, Die Kamikaze number one from 1987. Oh my gosh, Tom, have we gone crazy? You are not wrong, Russ. This is a <laughs> weird comic, but you know what? It's the preview of Speed Racer, which is like a major manga from the 60s, believe it or not. This right here debuted in June of 1987 and has a second printing that actually features Speed Racer on the cover that debuted in July. And it wouldn't be till later in July that Speed Racer number one would debut. And this is an increase of copies sold of 1600% after J.J. Abrams' Bad Robot announced that they're doing a live adaptation of 
Speed Racer for Apple TV. I grew up with Speed Racer. I remember watching the cartoon that they brought over and dubbed very, very poorly from Japan. I mean, this is one of those things that is classic. It reminds me of growing up. There's a very, very forgettable movie that came out in like 2008, and I just hope that Bad Robot does a much better better job with this. It's a cool property. It's a cool story. It's a lot of familiar characters, a lot of nostalgia tied to this, and I really think there's a good chance they could do a good job with this one. And I'm wearing my Scout Comics hat for a reason. At the list at number four, we have Mullet Cop, debuting in 2021. A 60-page story that is essentially Joe Dirt meets Judge Dredd meets Mall Cop. Tom, with that description, I am so completely and totally enthralled right now. I immediately have to go somewhere to buy myself a copy of this book. I mean, $8 average sales, that seems really reasonable for something that just got optioned. We're seeing an increase of copies sold of 1,850% this week. I reached out to James Hake. Shout out. He is one of the leads over at Scout Comics. We have word that this is not only option for an animated series, but we have amazing talent attached to it. The Animaniacs reboot writer, as well as the Family Guy executive producer are both attached. This is a wild story. This book may be a sleeper, folks. There are four covers out there that you should be paying attention to. The cover A has 6,000 print count. Cover B has 1,000 print count. Cover C, 650. And the rarest one, Cover D, the CBSN only has a 350 print count. So we're looking at about 8,000 total books in print for this comic right now. This narrative takes place 17 years after the Robo Mutant Wars. This is a serious comic book, kind of. It actually consists of mega malls that starts covering the country where people gather to experience everything from eating to entertainment. And there's so much of the world's population that reside, that frequent these malls, that you have to have a police force. You have to have the mall cops because there are crimes that are running rampant. And during a fight between these mutant pink dolls, one of the cops gets shot in the face, but fortunately he has a metal plate in his head. And after a tremendous amount of surgery, they redo his face and they give him a mullet and they put him in a position to go undercover at a food buffet so he can take down the granny in charge of all the crime. The crime boss is essentially Madam Web. I, I, I. Right? I, this sounds <laughs> absolutely amazing. I'm so excited. Like, if you liked Axe Cop, this sounds like the type of thing that I think people are really going to be into. And if you were looking to secure a copy, all of the covers as of the time of this filming are available on Scout Comics' website. That's right, scoutcomics.com. If you utilize code TOM101, we get nothing for this. This is a hookup that Scout Comics provided us to give some value to the comic fam. You can get 10 plus percent off. I'm not sure what they're doing right now. They changed the percentage. However, use code TOM101 and get a percentage off if there are still copies available on the site. Keep in mind, there is also a mullet cop one shot coming out in July that was just solicited through both Lunar and Diamond Comics. So if you are interested, should go pick that up. And coming in the list at number three, Infinite Crisis number five. We have the first full appearance and cover appearance of Jaime Reyes as the Blue Beetle in costume, seeing $60 average sales and a high sale for a CGC 9.8 this month hitting $400. An increase of copies sold of 600% after set photos were posted and the world rejoices. We're getting Blue Beetle in a comic accurate costume. And that's not all. This right here marks a major moment for superhero films at all. We have the first Latino lead of any Marvel and DC film to date that's about to debut. Tom, you and I have been talking about this on the list for years, and it was going to be a show, and that it was going to be a movie, and that it wasn't going to happen. So the fact that we know that Cholo Maridueña is going to be doing this, and we are so excited that everything's going to be comic accurate, oh man, this is awesome. Consider issue number three, the first appearance of Jaime Reyes, which also has a sketch variant as well as a George Perez color variant. Issue number five got the same treatment. However, the issue five variant that's in color is the George Perez one. And there's also some amazing homages, one of them being a George Perez homage inside the book. We have the first one, an Action Comics 1 homage with Superman lifting that damn car. Another fantastic homage interior is 
Crisis on Infinite Earths, number seven, The Death of Supergirl. So great. What a nice nod. With Thor Love and Thunder only two weeks out, I got to know what the community thinks about Christian Bale, Gore the God Butcher. We've seen him in trailer. It'll enter you to win this whatnot variant of Invincible number one. We got Omni-Man goodness that you can win by commenting. But at the list at number two, we have Gore's first appearance in Thor God of Thunder issue number two debuting in 2013. $190 $190 average sales, $400 for a CGC 9.8. Even with the movie right around the corner, these prices still seem soft, Tom. That's right. We've seen heights of 500 plus for this comic book, but we're still seeing an increase of copies sold of 171%. I mean, this is just sliding under the radar. I know some people are complaining about what Christian Bale looks like. I personally think he looks fantastic. I think he looks freaking cool, And the dude. more we get to see him in these trailers, it just darkens the sky and makes you feel like he's a menacing villain. He's going to be amazing as this. I think he looks great. Also, there's the one in 50 we got to talk about. This book hit heights of $2,450 back in April. What was the recent Heritage High sale? The recent Heritage sale was $1,020. And there was an eBay sale a week and a half before that at just over $1,500. This is another one of those books, the Acuna 1 in 50 of the first Gore the God Butcher. No one knows what the price should be. It's all over the place. Now, this is also the first appearance of the Necro Sword, which has ties to Null. It doesn't look anything like the comic books. It kind of looks like a standard sword, which is a little disappointing. You know what? It's just a bit of a letdown after all the buildup. Maybe they'll add something to it. Comic fam, what do you guys think? Let us know in the section down below. And here we are, like we do every single week, number one on the list, Thor number one. The second Thor Love and Thunder trailer is showcasing Jane Foster so much more. It's not going to be a brief moment. It looks like she's co-starring in this movie. Could we be seeing more Jane Foster in the future? Well, I think that is what's going to determine the longevity of this key as well as the reprints. We're going to get into it because I think there is some spec potential that we're going to get into. But not before we tell you about cover A, which is hitting $125 average sales. High sales of $280 for a 9.8, but a lot of copies are selling. This book has made our trending list multiple times in the last month. An increase of copies sold of 110%. When this book came out, it was so popular that they needed to make more printings almost immediately. I remember less than two weeks after the first one coming out, we saw a second printing with a blue footer. There was a little over 10,000, 10,500 copies made, and there's a recent 9.8 sale of that in April for $285. Now, that wasn't enough. The third printing needed to come out with a green footer, just about 5,000 copies sold, and a copy, a 9.8, sold in May for $340. And it didn't stop there. All of these printings are outselling the cover A. We have the fourth printing with a low under 5,000 printed, a purple footer that's hit $440 for a 9.8 this month in May. And that's not all. A year after the debut of this book, This was at the time where True Believer reprints were a thing, and they made a True Believer's reprint of this comic that you can secure for under $10 on average on eBay. And I think this one right here has potential. Hear me out. People are already getting mad at me, Russ, but there are (laughs) 15,700 copies that were ordered by retailers. Considering that's the most purchased, most printed of any of the other reprints, you would expect it to hit under what the others are going for in a 9.8. The last 9.8 sale hit $200 in March. For a book that you can secure for under $10 and get graded for a little over 20, this has the most potential upside if the book stays kind of where it is, like we've seen all the other Thor comic books essentially hit prior to the movie's release. We appreciate your time today, comic fam. Hot damn. As always. Geek responsibly. Enough said. Join myself, the comic sensei, Gem Man from Gem Man Collectibles, Nerdy Girl Comics, Skeleton Key Comics, my dad's even on there, Comic Pops, the Golden Age guru, Nate, made it for over eight hours of selling on the best new app to buy and sell collectibles whatnot available for both androids and iphones we're bringing the keys we're bringing the giveaways the silver age the bronze age the moderns the drops and so much more we also have two videos for you we made them for you man we've been doing these videos for a long time almost four years we appreciate your support comic fam see you soon